Hello, welcome again to this edition of uh, Inkscape tutorial. And uh, the first thing we want to do when we get a new program like this is to look at the different menu. So if you open it for the first time, you're going to see a blank page, just like found here. And the first thing you want to do is to look at the different menu under the program. So uh, first, we notice that we have uh, rulers here on the uh, left hand side and on the upper side of the program. And uh, we, we want to first of all know uh, what unit we're using here. So if you point on the ruler, you're going to see pixels just like here. And if you go to file and uh, you go to uh, document properties you have the possibility of choosing what units you want to use you can choose either pixels you can choose millimeters you can choose inches just as it suits you so uh, i usually like choosing millimeters and you see the rulers changing and if you feel like you do not want to use the rulers what you can do is to press uh, control and r <coughs> So for my brothers in West Africa, control R, and uh, that is going to toggle the ruler on and off. So um, I generally leave the rulers on. We go to the next menu. Uh, what we'll see here on the uh, top part of the program are the usual things you see for any program, file, edit, view, layer, object, path, text, filters, extensions. And most of the things on there will be self-explanatory and uh, you have to look into them when you come to use them that far. The first thing we want to look at is the selection tool. You use this generally if you have objects and you want to select them. The next one is the note tool. And the note tool is going uh, basically to transform an object into a uh, component such that you could edit them. The next tool is a tweak tool. The next one is a zoom in or zoom out. And as you go along, you notice that you have shortcuts in all of them. The next tool is a measurement tool. The next one is uh, the create rectangles tool. This is a create 3D box. And this is the create cycles or ellipses. This is the create stars or polygons create spirals, draw freehand tool, draw bezier curves, calligraphic or brush tool, the text tool, <coughs> the spray object tool, uh, erase existing path tool, fill bounded areas tool, create and edit gradients. So there are just lots of tools you have in there and uh, when you uh, play with the mouse on top of them. They generally tell you what they are meant to do. And uh, the next thing you want to notice is that you have other uh, swatches down here. And uh, you have uh, basically other shortcuts for tools on the right, uh, on the right hand side. <coughs> So next we have an object we've drawn there and if you go to the note tool and you select the object you will notice that you have arms there that have been created and if you were to hold the control key down and push it inside you give the object rounded corners right you give the object rounded corners this can happen with cycles it can happen with uh, any kind of object you draw. At times this may be good to give the object uh, a kind of look you, you, you want. So that will be it about the tools here. You've seen a practical example how they could be used. And the thing you want to do is that if you're going to draw an object, maybe you're drawing a figure usually in uh, uh, your, your journal of choice they've given you a dimension you should take if you click on the ruler and pull it so left click and pull 
you're going to produce a guideline. And if you left click and pull again, you produce a second guideline. If you left click up here and pull, you have another guideline. Left click and pull, you have another guideline. So basically, you have the possibility of uh, defining using the rulers here and here what dimension you want your object to have in the paper or in the A4 paper you're going to produce. So if you want to delete this, you either click on it and hit delete or you click on it, hold the mouse key down and pull it back to where you took it from. Click on it, hold the mouse key down and took it where you brought it from. It will be difficult for you to be using this and knowing exactly what you need you have up there. One shortcut of going straight to the place you want to. Let's say if we have uh, a journal requiring us to have a figure which is having a, a, a width of 150 millimeters. So if we double click on this line we're going to have a dialog box coming out showing us where we have the X and the Y. And uh, if we select this and we put in what we want in there, it's going to shift the line to where we want. So if we choose 25 here and hit enter, our line has moved to 25. So. If our dimension is 150, 25 plus uh, 150 is 175. So if we hit this line and type in 175, hit enter, our line is going to go in there. So we then are able to throw in objects we want for our, our paper or whatever and have them within that dimension. Now, when we're using the guidelines, we will notice that in this case, when you bring an object close without the control key, they just can go anyhow you want. But if you hold the control key down, you also can pull the object up and around the line. Now, there is a possibility of letting the, the objects you've drawn to actually stick to these lines so that uh, you do not go above the boundary you had to you had to use and for doing that you can go into the uh, file and document properties and you define there how you want your guidelines to work whether they should uh, magnet the objects when they are close to them or they shouldn't so that is left for you to choose. Another place where you can have the guideline is here. If you click there in the corner and pull, you're going to have a diagonal guideline. So for some people, this is also some sort of help uh, if they are drawing figures. I don't find it particularly useful, but I leave it to you to choose. The next other possibility in place of guidelines what people would do is that so I take away all the guidelines and I use the selection tool to delete all of this. What some people would do when drawing is that they'll go to view and you have different possibilities. Here right now we had guides selected which are the guidelines and if you select grid you're going to have this square page and some people find it, this useful because uh, they can use that to guide what they are drawing. So for me, I prefer switching that off the page grid and using the guideline because that is more comfortable with my eyes. So you will then decide to choose when you get used to the program, 
which one is best for you. There are some other things which uh, we haven't looked at in detail, but this part of the tutorial was just meant to introduce you a little bit into what is Inkscape, uh, play a little bit with it. And the next thing we will be doing, we'll be using some of these uh, ideas to draw, sorry, to draw uh, figures or objects and uh, try to see how we manipulate them. So thank you for listening and uh, look forward to seeing you in our next Inkscape tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.